Hi guys, and as usual, welcome to another kit review. So as you can see today, we're having a look at a kit from Tamiya. It is their Russian T62A. Uh, it's in 135th scale. The kit number for this is 35108, and this particular kit came out in 1988. Uh, picked it up recently for around um, $18 Australian. Normal retail price at the moment is around $24 and upwards for this kit. Um, this is literally just a rebox of the initial release from Tamiya in 1979. Uh, the kit number for that was MM208. Um, in 1980, Tamiya released this kit um, as a motorized version. Um, that was MT251. So this is when Tamiya was doing a lot of um, hybrid kits from the late 60s until the early 80s um, some of them were released as motorized kits i have a motorized tiger one in my position and also a motorized uh, eight ton half track from those days so that's why you see a lot of these older kits have the cutouts in the bottom for switches etc okay so i believe tamia has released some motorized kits lately um, I think they're in a bigger scale though, so not quite sure if they're um, 135th scale kits like this. Okay, so let's have a look and see what I bought for my little bit of money. Classic T62A, okay. I'm not expecting anything wonderful because it is an older kit. You do get a commander figure with it, okay. Um, vinyl tracks, basic painting, Russian tanks overall Russian green. Okay, so let's have a look at the rest of the box. On the side, of course, this will be a history of the tank in Japanese. It also shows you a T3476. Okay, so I guess they're relating this to the T62. On the other side, usual Tamiya, three views, front, back, and side view of the T62. Okay, so that's the box let's see what's inside so you've got your hull and it's obviously got a compartment here for three batteries one bag of sprues which is your upper hull and your turret these are all in dark green these are your fuel tanks uh, etc fittings for the hull and um, front and back i believe your wheels and decals and your commander figure and your vinyl tracks okay and instructions so even though this was a brand new kit that I just bought recently it has English and Japanese instructions in it just like your classic Tamiya kit okay so let's get rid of the box and in a second we'll have a look at those instructions and the decals. Okay, so let's have a look at the instructions. So, as I said, you do get one that is in Japanese. You do get a Tamiya Tech Tips because this is an ongoing release by Tamiya, so they do kind of keep it up to date. So, let's have a look. So what you've got here is, of course, a photo of the actual kit built. You do actually have a history of the tank itself, okay, in English and German. Overleaf. You get started straight into construction. So wheels, okay, um, you've got the back of the hull going on. Then you've got your road wheels, etc. going in here. They're all going on the axle. So this is a fairly straightforward build. You do get a piece of metal mesh for the engine covers. Okay, so that's something that's quite good. Headlights going on the front. And then, of course, you've got your uh, various boxes, etc. going on the upper hull. Okay. So you'll note, this is a colour call-out. It doesn't have a Tamiya colour, it is just by name. And that's the same throughout this kit. 
because it is an older kit, all the color call outs are by name rather than um, Tamiya color call. So here you have your other uh, equipment boxes going on. Okay, these are the um, extensions for the turret turning circle. Okay, I don't know what else you would call them. <laughs> All right, really wouldn't know what you call those. You've got a two part barrel. I believe you can get a metal barrel for this kit, but then you've got to balance the cost of that as against the cost of the original kit. Okay. Here you've got your heavy machine gun going together, your um, searchlight. Okay, so older Russian tanks did have searchlights. They did carry these heavy machine guns on the turret. Overleaf. You've just got your turret going together. Top and bottom, commander's hatches. You can, of course, leave them open or close them. It's entirely up to you. Then you've got mounting the gun, okay, searchlights, etc. going on. And then you've just got your rails, which the crew used to get up and off the tank. Over here you've got your commander figure, fairly basic um, painting. It does say German grey for the uniform. I would check that. A lot of uh, later Russian uniforms are actually black rather than German grey. But I'd check your uniform colours anyway. Extra fuel tanks for the back of the tank. And then literally your turret goes on. A few other fittings. It does get, and I'll show you down here, it does get an unditching log, which is classic uh, Russian tank. Even the Russian tanks in, some of them at least, in Ukraine at the moment, have unditching logs on them. And then that's it. So there is only... 12 steps to building this kit. This would be um, a good kit for a beginner, right? Fairly simple construction and fairly basic painting. So this is your painting. It does have uh, color call outs for like metallic gray, black, but overall it is just dark green, Russian dark green for the hull and everything else on this tank. You do get decals for a few different units well I won't say units because um, just different decals okay that's the guards unit and just basic turret numbers so the decals themselves are fairly basic in this kit okay and then overleaf you've got of course one that's painted up for winter with a white overspray and unusually at this again this again shows you how old this kit is it has a sprue layout. So all the newer Tamiya kits, you don't have a sprue layout in their instructions. It does also show you four other kits, okay, that Tamiya produced at around the 1980s. Challenger, US Infantry, and two types of Bradley fighting vehicles. Okay, so that's the instructions. Let's have a look at these. So these are your decals. As you can see, they're fairly basic. You get three lots of turret numbers, stars. This is the Russian guards emblem. Okay. This is copyrighted 2002. So they have updated the decals from 1988. Uh, which is understandable. So it does have some slightly updated parts, but nothing um, overly yee as far as the actual tank is concerned. So I'll give you a still of that. And while we're at it, I'll just show you these. So you do get poly caps for the wheels, so the wheels go around, because this was a motorized kit. And this is, I don't know if you can see it, there we go. This is actually a metal grill. It's not plastic, so that's quite good. I do like the metal grill. And while we're looking, and while we're looking at the accessory bits, let's have a look at these. 
So these are your basic vinyl tracks, okay? Um, I don't know, I have a feeling that these are ones that need to be melted together rather than glued, but I'll check that out in the instructions later. But apart from that, these are new tracks. They're very flexible, okay? So, yeah, they're pretty good. They're okay for this particular uh, cheap, basic Tamiya model. Okay, so that's the tracks. Okay, so next we'll have a look at the lower hull. Okay, so as you can see, it does have um, openings for the switches, etc. Place for three batteries because this is or was a motorized kit. The detail is, I won't say fantastic, but it is an older kit, so that's to be expected. Okay, smooth bottom, but it does look fairly straight and solid. Um, let's have a look, see if we can. There you go. MMT62. All right, doesn't have a date on it, but that is definitely a very classic Tamiya hull. Okay, so that's your bottom hull. Okay, so let's have a look at the upper hull. So, as you can see, fairly basic. I don't know if you can see it here, but it does have a shovel already moulded in. So that tells you again that this is an older kit. There's no flash on it, so not much cleanup. Um, as you can see, all the equipment, storage boxes, etc. are already moulded in, so it is quite solid. Okay, that's where your uh, metal grill fits, of course. On the other side, let's have a look. Tamiya, ah, oh, there it is, MMT62, okay. Like, you do have a lot of push-out points here, but you won't see those because they're underneath. There isn't much in the way of clean-up or anything to worry about in this upper hull, so... Tamiya does keep its moulds up to date, which is a good thing that a lot of others don't actually do. Okay, so that's the hull. Right, so let's have a look at the turret. So it is a two-piece turret. Top and bottom, okay. There's not much to see there. This is where your main gun mounts so that it can elevate. You do have some bolt detail around the hatches, okay. But things like this viewing, vision slits, etc., are already molded in. There is a bit of flow in the plastic, but that won't show up, I don't think, when it gets painted. A little bit of cleanup here where it's been attached to the sprue and they've broken it off in the factory but apart from that fairly plain fairly straightforward low profile t62 turret okay so that's the turret okay so Let's have a look at the sprues. So, obviously what you've got here is your road wheels and your drive sprockets, your commander figure, and um, these are the back of the lower hull, okay? So, let's have a look. And it does say just Tamiya, what's on the other side? There you go, MMT62, 1979. Okay, so it is clearly a rebox of the original issue now let's have a look at the wheels so there's no flash on this kit although you will have to 
do a bit of clean up along the mold lines okay there's your dry sprocket not much in the way of bolt detail on there but that's okay these are your um, rear axles for the dry sprocket let's have a look at your commander figure so as far as figures are concerned fairly average okay older style tamiya bit of clean up wrong mold line i guess you could use this one i mean i do know that mini art and icm etc do put out russian tank crew figures so you might want to upgrade if you wanted to do that but i guess you could still use this for painting experience no reason why not and there is the rest of the drive bracket okay fairly straightforward not much to it fairly straightforward build all around so okay so there's your wheels So let's have a look at the next group, which is, okay, your main gun, hatches, spotlights, etc. Accessories for this. All right, so let's have a look. Again, Tamiya, copyright. I'm not sure if you can see it there, 1979. So I've already noticed, oh, I'm sorry, that went out of focus. There is a fair bit of well, not a fair bit of flash. There's a little bit of flash around these smaller parts. Okay, so that doesn't surprise me. It does um, take a bit to upgrade molds around small parts. Even the heavy machine gun has some little bit of flash around the mold. Okay, that's your main spotlight. Okay, commander's hatches, gun mantlet two-part barrel let's have a look and that is fairly straight okay so I can't see having any dramas there like I said you can get an aftermarket metal barrel for this but that's what you've got to balance against the initial cost and how much that barrel is going to cost you these are the rails for the turret sides okay so fairly simple build as I keep saying all right this would be a really good build for a beginner, all right? Nice and easy. So that's the main gun. And the only other sprue I've got to show you is this one. As you can see, this is your spare fuel tanks for the back of the tank. Your, and I still don't know what you would call those. They go underneath the turret. I guess they're extensions for the hull underneath the turret. And of course your equipment boxes. So let's have a look at the detail. Oops, sorry, that went a bit fuzzy. Um, that is your unditching log, by the way. It is a solid piece of plastic. Spare track link. Okay. These are your uh, tops for the equipment boxes on the side of the hull. That's the ends of the spare fuel tanks. So, classic Russian tank. Spare fuel tanks on the back. Okay. That's been in vogue since oh god world war ii is when they started putting extra fuel tanks on these things and they still keep doing it okay so not much to see on that one so you've got your extensions that go on the hull underneath the turret 
your unditching log, spare fuel tanks, etc. So, like I said, that's a fairly straightforward build. Okay, and that's it. So, yes, that is Tamir's Russian T62 tank, okay, kit number 35108, uh, this is uh, released in 1988, this particular kit, initial releases was in 1979, um, a straightforward build, a good beginner's kit, a good uh, weekend kit, most definitely there's not much in the way of painting you would probably spend more time weathering this tank than painting it so um yeah i'm actually looking forward to building this one as just a weekender okay something to play around with anyway that's the end of this review hope you've got something from it thank you for watching thank you for your likes and your subscriptions and your comments always appreciated and as usual, guys, until next time, stay safe, stay well, and I will see you later.